praise because he is a wonderful God. Hallelujah. Without him, we would be nobody. Without him, we would have nothing. Glory to God. Father, enter into this place with your presence. Lord, let us feel your glory. Saturate us with the joy of your happiness. For God, your word has already declared that our bodies are your temple. They belong to you. Come in now, God. In Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands before the Lord. Oh, open your Bibles on your electronic devices. The Gospel of Matthew. You may be seated. Chapter 3. Man. I want to talk to you this morning. When a father is well pleased, or you might want to say what pleases a father, or a well-pleased father. I think it's appropriate to speak on the behalf of the fathers since today is Father's Day. When a father is pleased, think about that for a moment. Oftentimes, we have always thought compassionately towards mothers on Mother's Day with flowers, be it roses, lilies, dresses, Valentine's Day, roses, chocolates, because this, what makes mothers, women happy and, and pleased uh, is to be thought of. Well, today we want to express when a father is pleased. Amen? See, I want, to, I want to start off with a few quotes right quick. Gracious fathers lead their sons through the minefield of sin. Indulge fathers watch their sons wander off into the minefield. Legal fathers chase them there. Y'all will get that tomorrow. I'll say it again. Maybe y'all will catch it. Gracious fathers lead their sons through. I tried to say it slow so that y'all would catch it. Maybe you didn't catch it, so I'll speed it up. Gracious fathers lead their sons through the minefield of sin. Indulged fathers watch their sons wander off into the minefield. Legal fathers chase them there. In other words, they chase them away. It's time to get out and go. What are fathers called to do? What are fathers called to do? Fathers give, fathers protect, fathers bestow, fathers yearn and long for the good of their children, fathers delight, fathers sacrifice, fathers are happy and open-minded, fathers create abundance and if lean times come, they take the leanest portion for themselves. Y'all still missed it. In other words, a father does all of that, and at the end of it, when the lean time comes, he take that portion for himself. So in human history, we would never be more perfect, uh, a perfect father and son moment than this moment between God and his son. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, if we may submit this into our evidence to prove our case and our point, uh, the gospel of Matthew, and let me get there. I don't know why I'm sitting here in the 16th chapter. It's chapter 3, verse 16, 17 says, When John baptized Jesus, came up. When John baptized him, Jesus came up out of the water. 
Then God opened the sky and Jesus saw God's spirit coming down. He came down like a bird which sat upon Jesus. Then Jesus heard a voice in the sky. This man, in the King James Version, that was the English, easy English. Let, let, me, uh, let me go to the King James Version so it won't confuse you. Uh, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water and see the heavens were open to him. Notice the heavens were open to him. Okay? And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning on him and see a voice from heaven. Now, this translation says, uh, and see a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So we want to take our thought from this particular verse, you know, when a father is well pleased. Or what pleases a father. Or well pleased father. Say that with me. When a father is well pleased. Now children, you all can learn something from this. Uh, because most children seem to think that it all comes from just mama. But when the father is well pleased, what pleases a father? Say that. Or a well-pleased father. See, earlier I told you what fathers are called to do. We are called to give. We are called to protect. We are called to bestow. We are called to yarn uh, and, and, and long for the good of our children. We are called to sacrifice. Fathers are happy and open-handed. And fathers create abundance for their family. See, and this is things that we sometimes don't understand. So in our history, we can see no greater relationship between a father and son than this one between God and his son, Jesus. Uh, this is the keynote. It's called pleasure. Everyone say pleasure. Because God was pleased with his son. Amen. This is the pitch that a father-son relationship needs to match. Well pleased. Notice what, what God said. Not only were, were, was he pleased with Jesus, but the Bible said he was well pleased. When we don't match that pitch, a lot of things start going wrong. Even our relationship with God needs to be where God is well pleased. Sometimes we have to stop and just ask ourselves. We don't have to ask God. We can ask ourselves, are God well, is, is he well, or well pleased? See, Jesus pleased him because he was obedient and all he thought about was the will of the Father. Children, start considering the will of your Father. See, there's a difference between a daddy and a father. There's a difference between a mama and a mother. See, what makes you a mama is when you give birth. But giving birth don't make you a mother. What makes you a daddy is when you release your semen and it gets the egg of a female and a baby is born, but it does not make you a father. What, what makes you a mother is when you show love and discipline. What makes you a father is when you show love and discipline. Amen? See, anybody can, can make a baby. See? Now, now, some of you have not had children, but you are a mother because you're the only figure that have taken in. See, watch this here. A whole lot of us have assumed the responsibilities of somebody else. You have a whole lot of daddies and mamas that dropped them, but it took a mother and a father to resume the responsibility. You know? And, and you know when you're doing right as a mother and a father is because of this. <clears throat> when your children agree with everything that you do and you say, that does not make you a good father. Listen to me, men. 
Now, I know the Bible says don't provoke your children. <coughs> but there is a point, if you understand the scripture, that you have to provoke them. Don't provoke them to anger with nagging, but you have to provoke them to do good and respect. Don't, don't relinquish your duties as a father because you will be judged upon that, you know. Uh, understand that, you know, because, and you don't have to be in the same household with your children to be a father. Because remember I told you, a father give, a father protects, a father bestows, a father yearn for the long, for the good of the children. And the father delights. Every father want to see their children do good in life. I remember talking to my son and I told him, son, let, let me share this with you. Obviously, it is true that I will not leave you a million dollars. It is true that I would not leave you a lot of things that I don't have. But I'm going to leave you with something that is greater than anything I could ever give you in life. I'm going to teach you principles to how to be a man. And then, look, fathers, and then I, I told my son these words. I say, son, let me share this with you. Do not damage, corrupt, or mess up some young girl. And what I told him was this. Do not if you are not planning on marrying her. So I told him, mess up her life. And I know a lot of women, wives, have been damaged because he made the baby, but he didn't stay there to take care of it. So that's okay. That's okay. I don't want you to... I don't want you to, to fret behind that, okay? I don't want you to fret behind it. it. It doesn't make him a bad person. Sometimes we just make the wrong decisions. See, being a father is accepting responsibility. See, is accepting responsibility. So the fact that that these other things have not been added to us when we look back at the scripture, the fact that we live in fatherless times reveals our attitudes towards God, our Father. Father hunger is one of the chief symptoms of our day. Children are crying out for the love and the attention of their fathers. If, if you don't know how important you are, men, I'll share with you how important you are. You are more important to your children than their mother are. See, see, watch this here. Watch this here. Stay with me. When a girl does not have the love of her father... She will look for it in every man that come her way. See, the first love is not the one that she gave up her virginity to. The first love that she have is the love of that father because he loves her unconditionally. And watch this here. Watch this here. Unlike daddy, Unlike boyfriend who would love you, y'all know how we just do it. I love you forever. And 10 people done told you that. Unlike that, her daddy, watch this here, she can leave out the door with no children and walk back in with 10, and her daddy, her father, would still love her unconditionally. She can be the ugliest. Or he can be the ugliest in the world, but father's going to still love. A father's love is unconditionally. That's how it is. 
That's how God loves us. David say, when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord, listen, watch this here. God brought us all into his royal family. He showed us what a father is. See, most children think that father don't love them when they discipline them. But if your father does not discipline you, he does not love you. Because his discipline shows his level of how much he loves you. See? See, that's what it's all about. That's why when a father hears that his child is in danger, I don't care if it's a fight, accident, or what, he rushes, and he'll be ready to even, listen, listen, it just depends on how it is. A daddy will fight a three-year-old. Just depending on how bad he beat up his three-year-old. Because he go, watch this here, he goes into protection mode. See, mama goes into love mode, but daddy goes into protection mode. See, what do I mean about that? Mama runs and say, oh, my baby, but daddy runs and say, who did it? He's in protection mode. That's how God is. When one of God's children is in trouble, he goes into, oh, y'all don't believe me. I'm going to prove it to y'all. They, uh, I'm, I'm, give, give me some, somebody give me some paper balled up. Just, just some paper real quick balled up, you know. Uh, here go one. I'll use the program. We, we don't read them anyway. So watch, Stephen was there. Stephen was there. And what? They, they was throwing stones at Stephen. And the Bible say, here go God in Jesus' form went in to protect. He didn't run and say, oh, they hit my baby. He stood up. He was in protection mode. He was ready, but then Stephen say, Father, forgive them. Notice what he said now. The heavens open up when you, now watch this. The heavens open up to Jesus when he was baptized of John. And then when Stephen was being stoned, the heavens open up and he saw Jesus. Watch this. And he say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. So don't you think your father, even when he's disciplined you, when he's hard on you, especially young men, it's because he is directing you in life. Always say this, and it doesn't mean that my concept is right. Well, it's right to me. I don't care if it's right to you. It's right to me. This is just the way I see it. Mamas make sissies, but daddies make men. What do I mean about that? Soon as he falls, oh, baby, you all right? Daddy say, boy, get up and come on here. Be a man. Y'all ever experienced that? Baby be crying. Daddy walk up there and say, shut up, boy. I used to tell my son that when he cried, shut up, son. You cry too much. He was four or five. I didn't know he should have been a baby. But I say, you know, ain't no sisters in the Baines family. Grow up, be a man, son. Men don't cry. It's not that we're being hard. It's what we do. It's, it's just there. We don't answer to every call. Oh, Y'all don't believe me? I, I see the look on the mama's faces. Y'all don't believe me? I'll show you. Jesus cried. He didn't cry to Mary. He cried to God. He said, Father, if it be thy will, remove this bitter cup. God just said, and this, I'm just saying this here. It's like God say, well, just, just leave it there. You're going to be all right. When he cried out and said, Father, why did y'all forsake me? God was just silent. How many of y'all, your father's silent sometimes when you're talking to him? Go up there and you be like, Daddy, see this? So my grandchildren come to me and they hurt themselves. They be crying. And they be saying, Papa, look. I say, you want Papa to pray for it? I used to kiss it. So it be making it feel better. I say, you want Papa to lay hands and pray for it? In the name of Jesus, shalaka, shalaka. Now, I, I love Leo, raise your hand. Leah, uh, Leah, raise your now. That that that's now. I love that. That's my little actor right there. <laughs> yeah, I be around the house with us sometime, and I say, "In the name of Jesus, I'm fall out." <laughs> I tell, I say, "You receive it." She said, eh. <laughs> you know. but not London. 
I told her I was singing Sunday. She would back there and say, what in the world is Papa and I singing? They don't give me no slack whatsoever. But when my grandsons are crying, I always tell them, boy, shut up. Then your daddy tell you about all that crying, you got to be a man. This is what fathers do. It's not that we don't love our children. It's not that we don't care. We're, we're trying to raise a man. See, the Bible say, let the older women teach the younger women. But men have to, look, a woman cannot teach a boy how to be a man. That's why society is messed up. Because the only figure that he had was his mama. C can I go a little half X-rated? He never saw his daddy walking around in his boxers. He saw his mama walking around in her panties in Brazil. So he grew up thinking that's what he had to wear. Let's not play with it. And then they get embedded in their mind. God made me like, no, God didn't make you like nothing. God only created one man. That was Adam. He made one woman. That was Eve. Everything else, they did it. See, I, I, I'll show you why fathers are so important. Because then you, you have children, they say, Daddy, I want to be just like you. And you know what I told my son? All of them, I say, no, don't be like me, son. Be greater than me. See, be greater than me. You know. So now watch this here. Watch this here. The fact that these things are going to be added. We got a hunger. So many children crying out for their father. It is the basis for our political follies, our cultural follies, our uh, technological follies, and, and so on. But the solution is not to schedule numerous family retreats. And that's what we try to do. The solution is to announce, preach, and declare that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of God and of Christ. Another way of saying this is that men must seek to be Christian first. If they love Jesus more than mother or father, now watch this, sons or daughters, then they will be in fellowship with the source. They will not be in fellowship with the source of our love. If you love your wife, your mama, your sons, and your daughters more than you love God, I'm talking to the men now. Come on now. You got a messed up solution there. See, let me say it again. The first thing we have to do is seek as men to be Christians. And if Men love Jesus more than their mother, their father, their wife, sons, or daughters. Then they will be in fellowship with the source of love. Women, listen. He cannot love you and those children if he's not in a love relationship with God. See? This is why Jesus says, he said, Husbands, love your wives. Watch this. As I, Christ, have loved the church and gave my life. See, it's called sacrifice. You know, you can't love. If you love, if you love your children or if you love, and, and that's vice versa, women also. If you love family, husband, wife, children, more than you love God, God should be first. Everybody clap your hands and say God should be first. See, so that's what, that's what you, have to, you have to look at. If they make an idol out of any one of their family members, talking to us men, then we are out of fellowship with the source of our love, meaning that the idol is shortchanged. See, our relationship with God, you know, and I want y'all to get this because this is what's wrong with our family cultures. This is why we have so many problems in our families. This is why marriages are not lasting. Is because if he's in love with you, if you are number one, I can guarantee you it ain't going to last long. See? Because he have nothing.
nothing to hold him there. That's why it's so easy. See, I, I'm the first one to tell you, I, I, have, I, have, I haven't been saved all my life. But during part, like Sister Ramsey said the other night, during a part that I was saved, but I didn't know how to live a saved life, I, I had four children out of wedlock. Three lived and one died. I offered to marry the mamas, but no one wanted to get married because I wanted to do the right thing. That was the right thing, in, 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 you know. But now watch this here. I stayed in my children's life. I still corrected them. I, I went old school. Sometimes you go old school, be talking to them on the phone. Boy, look, do, do I need to come over there? No, sir, dad. Do I need to handle my business? No, sir, dad. You know. Uh, so, so watch this here. As men, if we love God first and love wife second and children third, then we're in the right order. See, because that's the, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Don't, don't ask me no questions. I don't know. Ask God. That's the way God set up the family. You know, so don't get mad at me. Get mad at God. It ain't going to do you no good. A man's wife receives far more love when she is number two after God than she would if she's number one before God. See, because if a man loved God first, he have something to keep him regulated. See, see, you got to understand that. So it's all right. I know what most women say, I, I, I'm, I'm not a number two to nobody. I'm a number one. Baby, let me tell you something. If you don't be number one to God, let me, well, let, let me just say this here. Let me say this. You want to be number one, and I'm not saying this you all, but based on what? What give you the right to be number one? Your looks? Your shape? Your intelligence? Your sexiness? Your money? You can have all of that. And guess what? There's still somebody who can out-qualify you. See, I'm number two in my wife's life. I don't mind being number two. Because watch this here. Number two today is the number one. Why? It's because when I can match myself up with God and she loved God first, and me second, I ain't got to worry about no other joker. And as long as I love God more than I love her, and she loved God more than she loved me, then we, can, we know what it is to show love. Now, I'm not saying you're not going to make mistakes. I'm not saying you're going to do something crazy. But let me show you something. See, we, we, get, we get love all twisted. If you love me, buy me a big diamond ring. If you love me, give me a five carat ring. If you love me, buy me this, buy me You can't buy love. What the love does, love covers when he stayed out all night long and came in with lipstick all over his shirt, smelling like alcohol, walking with his drawers in his hand. Come on, somebody. Oh, no, 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 I didn't do that. <laughs> no, don't, don't look at me. <laughs> you ain't supposed to say that. <laughs> I'm covering my brother. See, it's love that made you stay. That's why you need to choose love. Don't choose because he got a nice car, a nice house, a good job. You better choose love. Because women, let me show you something. When you coming up, yeah, I know y'all had the 36, 24, 36, all that kind of stuff. But it's amazing what age and babies can do for you. And guess what? It's love that keep him there. You know, because you're not number one. God is number one. And that's where it ought to be. God being number one. 
If God is number one, clap your hands. A man's children will be fathered diligently when they have, uh, when, when they are loved in the context of a, of a much greater love. See, fathers can love their children when they learn what love is from God. You know, there are many lawful activities and pursuits that ought to be excluded from the sanctuary. Even though they are taught, shaped, and informed by the ministry of the sanctuary, and some examples include love making and auto mechanics and great novels and heart surgeons, all that. But in order to have these kingdom activities conducted rightly, it is necessary to have the worship at the center being conducted rightly. Men, you don't have to be macho with everything. It's all right to worship God. You know, and here's, what, here's my problem it fathers. I'm talking to the men folk. I should have had y'all up front. Here's my problem that I have with the male culture. We can cheer on Michael Jordan. We can cheer on J.J. Watts. We can cheer on, who is it? LeBron James. Stephen Curry. We can cheer all them on. But then when we get to God's house, we can't cheer God. We got to be masculine. You know. But at home, if we didn't know no better, they would probably say it's got to be something wrong with that brother. He got to be a gay or something. Oh, God. Go LeBron, you saw ooh, LeBron. That's my man. Woo! Don't let him win a championship. But then we come into the house of God, and all we do is we see the women jumping and screaming, the men sitting there. Yeah, all right, yeah, yeah, God cool. Yeah, all right, yeah. Hallelujah. Clap your hands, the women be. The men stand up and But your children need to see real worship coming out of you. See, like they say, and I don't know if this is true, but I have to use the slogan, real men wear pink. Now, I don't know if that slogan is true or not. I ain't off into all that. I love pink. You know, I don't have no problem with wearing pink. I wear yellow. I wear green. Why? It's because I know who I am. See? So now let me move on because I want to get through. See, we, we, everybody shout authority. authority. Authority flows to those who take responsibility. See, if David was right here today, David would tell you when he worshiped God, Man, look, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, I can say this, I can say this, before I go to David, I can say this, men, quit, quit, don't, don't try, don't try, because y'all know some of y'all are married, and y'all cry like little babies when you got married, you know, you see, when you see them walking down the aisle, you just cry, <laughs> well, when they cried so much, so it's Grigsby, I almost looked for me a handkerchief, I wasn't even getting married, I was doing it, and they, they, see, that's, that's called, and, and watch this here, men. Let me correct something. Don't let society tell you, oh, it's just because you're getting in touch with your feminine side. Now, I don't have that kind of side. You don't have to be sissified to cry. Jesus cried. And you can tell when you're getting old. When you sitting there watching the movie and your eyes watering up with tears, you be holding back like, whew. Got to quit watching these kind of movies. It's just a movie. But you know what goes on? It shows the God in you because you think about society. Now, I need to get to a point real quick because I don't want to hold y'all long. Authority flows to those who take responsibility. 
See, one thing I loved about it is my daddy took responsibility, so my stepdaddy, I don't even like to use those words, step. Step simply means I step on you, you step on me. Now, forget that. Look, look, look. I'm going to say my father. When my daddy came to our house, he met my father. And I ain't talking about God. And, and, and his, his name, well, I, 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 had, I have to say this here. When my mom, uh, you know, I, well, let me, let me just. Well, heck, my, well, I'm like, ain't nothing changed, children. I heard a little girl one time say, I got a whole lot of daddies. <laughs> I was like, well, I know what she mean about that. <laughs> Light bill daddy, water bill daddy, grocery daddy. <laughs> See, women, yeah, sugar daddy. See, look, I thank God for my mama because can't no woman run nothing over me. I learned by observing her. She get through raising hell at us and beating us. Then she get on the phone and she be talking and all of a sudden she was a good actor. Maybe that's why, that's why I, I do it so good. She was a good actor. She could be talking. No, y'all, 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 shut up. I'm going to get on this phone. Hello. I just don't know who I'm. And I'm like, are you serious? I don't like Bill $125. And just boohooing. And I could tell when the response is what she wanted because she say, okay. And then she'll hang up the phone and say, no, y'all better shut up and don't say nothing. And then we hear another line. I'm like, oh, that's how the game goes. That's why they couldn't run no games on me, Brother Mike, when I was coming. I use a reversal. So now watch this. The point I'm making is this. When my daddy came to the house, he talked to my father. And my father allowed us to meet with our daddy. My daddy knew that he did not have authority because he was not the father figure. See? And, and that's why I never had a problem with my sons, my other two sons, father, because I was the daddy. So I, I didn't do no tripping. No, 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 no. See, because look. The man who in the home who's taking care and discipline and clothing and feeding, that's father. That's mother. But the one who relinquished that authority, that's daddy and mama. And, and, and let me say this here. Look at me now. Touch some young person and say, wake up. Hold your head up because I'm going to hit you with a boulder. You never give more respect to daddy than you do father. See, whenever my sons would say something, I'd say, well, well what, 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 your, what your father say about it? You know, what your father say about it? And if there wasn't no father in the home, then that was fine. But other than that, you look, you don't respect mama more than you respect mother. You don't respect daddy more than, it, and look, 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 if they want that respect, of authority, they should have stayed there. I know I'm not making sense to some of you. But you'll get it after a while. No, 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 no. See, look, you, you, you're not going to live in my house and respect another joker more than you respect me. And I'm feeding you. I'm clothing you. I'm keeping a roof over your head. I'm keeping the water on. I'm keeping groceries. Now, I'm not going to call you a lie, but I'm going to say the devil is a lie. That's the way it is. I, I hear my wife often relating to her father of what he taught her, and he wasn't her biological daddy. I hear how she would say, daddy will pull us out of school and make us work, make us go hustle junk and all of that and all that. But you know what? Look what he produced. So they would be crazy 
to give more honor and respect to somebody who have not taught them nothing than somebody who taught. L listen, L I don't know. L I, I have to say this. I can only say this in the effects of this, and, and you know, I on, only, and I'm just going to say it like this here. Only about two or three of us on this side, you all can say it, but I have to say, I thank Mr. Lucas, never met him, but I thank him. Why? It's because what he produced. See, because what he produced on any given hot day when I'm out there cutting the yard, she'll come right on side of him and push the line more. You know, you, you ought to be thanking Mr. Lucas because that's why he worked the way he worked. You ought to be thanking Mr. Lucas because Mr. Lucas had a son named Yuri Patterson who gave birth to, and look, he was not in, I know this part, he was not in the home with your husband, but he was a father. Because he would catch a bus and walk to them children. You know. And can I throw this to you? Because your father may not have a college education. He may be a drunkard. He may be an alcoholic, a drug addict. But as long as he taking care of his responsibilities. Yeah, I know what most people say. We got this all wrong. Oh, my daddy was just a drunkard. He was an alcoholic. But look, you ain't never went without a meal. You, he took care of home first, and then he took a little bit and did what he wanted to do with it. I got a problem with you honoring the joker who is there, but do not do nothing for you. It's all about himself. Yeah, Would a real man stand up? That's what I'm talking about. Because... It, it, that, that's what it's all about. That's, uh, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. See, see. Now I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Stanley, I don't care. Yeah, you're gonna go through the resistance. You did it, but you came out to be okay. Your boys may be resistant, but when I see them react with other people, babies, I know they're gonna be okay. They, they're gonna be a lover of children. Because children just flocked to them because special Elijah gonna be just like a he just loved children. He just loved children. You know. He loved children. That, that's what it, that's what it's all about. So me and look, we okay. We okay. The, even if you wasn't in the home to raise your child. Don't you put your head down as long as you took care of your child. Now, I got a problem with uh, daddies that don't do nothing. Do something. If you don't do nothing but bring a, 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 a jar of mayonnaise and a, and a loaf of bread and say, have a sandwich on me, that's all the best I can do. But Joker, don't go buy you no Jordan's $200 tennis shoes and you go to pay less for your child. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. No. See, I raised my son. I said, no, nah, son, I'm, I'm not going to buy you them kind of tennis shoes because I don't buy them for myself. Wait, you become a man, get you a job, and then you can buy you some stuff like that. Now he's a man, he got a job, and he just buying everything. See, fathers, you want your children to be greater than you. And don't become inferior when they're being greater than you. So let, let, me, let me hear on to a close. I haven't held y'all too long. But me and this is what we got to do. See, biblical authority knows how to bleed for others. See, Jesus did it. The foundation of all Christ's authority in the church is the blood that he shed. It don't give you guaranteed authority because you're a man. See, being a male with male organs don't make you a man. You have to do what a man has to do. If you got to drive across country two or three days to get a paycheck to come back to your family, that's what a man do. See, let me, let me share something with you all. I, I told my son, he learning this now. I said, son, let me tell you something. You don't know what we go through to provide. So you don't know. You don't know how many times 
I've been cussed out, but couldn't walk away because I had responsibility. See, you don't know how many times I wanted to quit and was too tired to go and had to go on some sick days is because I love my family that much. See, that's what a father does until he can't go no more. And when he can't go no more, he's laying there still trying to figure out because now he feels less than a man. Why? It's because he's not doing what he's been created to do. He's not providing. He's not taking care of. It makes a man, if you ever want to see a man go into rage, take away his ability to provide for his family. He may walk around smiling, but deep down inside, he feels less than a man because he's not providing. He's not taking care of. See, because while he's working, he's doing it for his children's children. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about because God said he will earn his keep by the sweat of his brow. You know, look at somebody and say, look at some man and just say, be a man. Now, I'm going to make this last part. I'm, I'm going to end with this part. I'm going to make this part. Some of you may not like it. That's okay. Nobody never liked the truth. Stand up and be a father. Be the leader. Don't take authority by saying, I'm the man of the house. You show by your actions. That's what we need more of in the house of God. How do you do that? If, if, if you, Listen, listen. Men, we have to stop being lazy. If we want to be and say we are the head of our families, then we need to act like it. You know, your wife ought not to be the lead worshiper. You ought to be the lead worshiper. See, that, that's what, I mean, that's just Bible. Don't, don't lay on the couch and send your wife and children to church. Get your behind and get there. Why? Joshua said, as for me and my house, if you want to take authority, then take it in God. They don't need more basketballs and more footballs and weights. They need to see daddy leading like God leads. Don't give that responsibility to the preacher at the church. Don't give it to the deacon at the church. You have to stand up like Joshua and say, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I told my son, I said, you can live here as long as you want to, but one option is you got to go to church. So we had a little conversation about that. He said, well, what do you mean I got to go to church? Well, I say, that's what I said. This is my house. And in my house, it ain't but one man in my house. And if you're going to stay here, you're going to go to church. You don't have to go to Heart of Faith, but you better go to somebody's church. And the day that you don't go to church is the day that you're going to exit out of these doors. Why? I'm not letting nothing take the first place of God in my life. God holds. Men, listen to me. If your woman, and I'm in right, don't have to say wife. My wife is my woman. If your woman is not happy, then you need to see what you, you know, and you know, oftentimes I, I look a lot. When she ain't happy, I know I, something I done done. I'll fix it when I get there. Or I'll let it work itself out. Why are you saying that, Pastor? Well, God said it. He said, come here, Adam. Now, look, I'm going to put you and Eve in the garden. But listen to what I'm telling you. You can eat of every tree, but except the tree of 
good and evil. Do you understand that? So Adam goes on. Well, guess who eats at the tree? Eve. Eve got the seed. But I know we say this, we say this, but there's some truth to it. God did not respond because he gave the authority to the man. So Eve took it and fed it to Adam. And as soon as he bit, God came, Adam, where are you? Adam said, I'm naked. Who told you you were naked? Now watch this here. Adam say, that woman that you gave me. But see, now watch this here. That, did, that didn't move God because God said, I gave you the woman because you was lonely, but I commanded you. That means you were not at your post. What you doing letting your woman talk to the serpent anyway? Me and I, it going to hit us all. If you had been talking to her, See, when I, when I, I mean, I may be crazy, but I ain't too crazy. I, I ain't too crazy. Yeah. See, li, li, listen to me, man. I ain't too crazy. Now, I may say some crazy stuff and do some crazy, but I ain't too crazy. I had enough sense this morning to look and say, oh, look at you. Fishnet stockings. I I had enough sense to do something because what you won't tell her, what you won't do, give me that bowl out of my office. Yeah. I mean, I mean look, man, I'm, I'm talking to the fathers today. You can play crazy. I told a lot of women with four, five, six children, I said, don't worry about that knucklehead. There is a man somewhere that will love you and all five. In fact, sometimes it's better. The bigger, the better. Why? Because we call them crumb snatchers. At least ain't nothing being wasted. Can I get a witness? It's, it's sitting on the icebox. Yeah. I mean, look, yeah, we, we want to be macho. We want to be this. Listen. I went yesterday, my wife, she got us both a full body massage. That's the second one we didn't have. And I, I, enjoy, I was trying to peep over there at her. She was trying to peep at me. They covered our eyes up with towers where we couldn't see. But all she heard at one point from me was, mm, <laughs> I ain't hear nothing from her, but it was feeling good. But I was uncomfortable. Because it was another man Tell them to hear up It ain't but one bowl on there I'm trying to close my sermon So listen fathers If we gonna be the men It's time to, to, to be the man All the way Let your children Because let me tell you something Yeah that'll work, that'll work Let me tell you something See, because whatever you won't do And whatever you won't say this is what they call, what y'all call it, y'all called it earlier. Kept in a bowl, preserved, baby, to sweeten your coffee and your tea. And the sugar daddies ain't gonna never die. Because <laughs> when the bowl empty, they just fill it back up. And if you think, listen, now I don't want to, I don't want to put up no red flags, but if you think your woman don't know how to preserve sugar, here you go. I ain't, I, I'm not sawing no discard. I'm just telling you. Now, now I'm looking at some of y'all like, yeah, I deal with real people with real issues. If you want to hear Jesus died and got up on the third day, you need to go down to the Baptist church. I'm trying to get you from that elementary teachings to tell you reality. Now I'm being like Paul. I, now, now notice, I didn't too much tell you a lot of stuff I said. I didn't say Jesus said or the Holy Spirit because I'm like Paul. I got enough Jesus in me that I got some wisdom and knowledge to know how this thing goes. 
So fathers, look, we got to get it together. If we gonna get it together, we got to be men all the way. You got to be men all the way. All the way. You got to be men all the way in everything that you do. You know, teaching your son how to pray. You know, that's what it's all about. You know, and that, that's what every father ought to be excited if you got your son in ministry with you. See, your son see you kneeling down praying, or your son see you praying, or your son see you not at, at home on the couch, but they see you in God's house. That's what it's all about. And to my single men, let me tell you this. This is what my pastor used to tell me and my cousin. He said, one service was enough. We make it the morning service. We wasn't going at 3 o'clock. He say, let me tell y'all something. Y'all keep sending the women out here by themselves to church. There's a lot of single men out there that's looking for a wife. He was letting us know, you number two. And these women see these single men and they're saying, I wish my husband was here. Well, guess what? I don't think me and him missed another three o'clock service. <laughs> we start going. And, and I found that to be true. And watch this here. A lot of them are not single. We was at a church preaching. I'm in a pulpit. A man was preaching, a pastor. When we had words, I introduced my wife. I say, I asked my wife, blah, 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 blah. When it was over with, he came to shake my hand. He went straight from the pulpit to my wife. He had been watching her the whole service. He went straight to her and kissed her. That didn't bother me. Because every man ought to not want something that nobody else. And then did that stop? No. She went to get us some food in the line. He followed her in the line and gave her his number. That didn't bother me. Why? Because he can't go no further than she let him. And if she'd say, baby, what have my key don't work? I changed the lock. You no longer live here. Well, just give me my clothes. That's all I can do. I ain't finna kill nobody. I ain't finna that crazy nobody. I ain't finna go to jail. I'll just do like old dog. Go get neutered and live the rest of my life. Just being at ease. Y'all stand to your feet. <laughs>